Now I request Dr. Sonal, moderator for today's webinar, to further navigate us through the program. Namaskar to one and all. Warm greetings from NIMS University. I am Dr. Sonal Yadav from Department of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry, NIMS Dental College. NIMS Dental now College I request Dr. Sonal, moderator for today's webinar, to further navigate us through the program. On the behalf of our esteemed chairman, Namaskar to one and all. Dr. Balbir, Warm Mr. greetings Mr. from NIMS University. I am Dr. Son Kalyan from Department of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry, NIMS Dental College. To our webinar, NIMS Dental Now I request Dr. Son to moderate for today's webinar to further navigate us through the program. On the behalf of our webinar, first and foremost, I would like to start with the snippet of our university. NIMS University was established under the NIMS University A 2008. It has world-class infrastructure with 10,000 plus students from more than 70 plus countries. University has signed MOUs with I think there is a technical glitch. I should have a technical picture. University is being recognized and awarded by numerous national and international associations as well. NIMS Dental College and Hospital, founded in 2006, is credited by NAC. Its main goal is to achieve higher service and education through students and society. Karo, tell somebody to get fix, fix, fix screen shots, screen shots. Audience ka geotech picks. Meeting with the chair chairperson, he is a highly successful and decorated individual with a long list of medical adornments and feats to his credit. The chairman and chancellor of Wings NIMS University, Professor Dr. Balbir S. Tomar, has been a proud alumni of Harvard University, King's College London, where he did his fellowship in pediatric liver disease. Returning to India, he followed his heart's calling and established NIMS University. We have been in the verge of transformation and blessed to have uh, various different centers in our campus. Now, what I would like to uh, welcome our principal, Dr. M.K. Sunil. NIMS Dental College. He has been an avid academician with over 26 years of experience in various domains. Sir has served as board member of IA Omar more than 17 years, editorial board member for many national and international index journals. I welcome you, sir, and request few insights for today's webinar. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Sonal. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sonal. And uh, good afternoon, one and all. 
it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all on this uh, online webinar i welcome both national and international delegates on this forum and definitely this platform will enrich you the knowledge sharing by the eminent speakers and today we have such a eminent personality dr kanika gupta who is a well renowned orator good orator in the field of pedodontics so i welcome and uh, i thank to our chairman sir for giving a, a providing a, a good, great platform to uh, meet the and uh, the eminent personalities and exchange their views in the field of deep pedodontics and uh, i thank you uh, dr chaya and dr sonal and their team for giving an opportunity to uh, uh, to providing a, a such a beautiful platform on the online webinar to me and uh, i thank to the the speaker dr kanika for accepting our invitation on this forum thank sir, you my pleasure sir thank you sir <laughs> now i would like doc to welcome dr chaya professor and head department of pediatric and preventive dentistry with both national and international publications under her hood she is leading the department of the dynamic odontoscopy swiger i invite you ma'am to enlighten us as and take us forward with today's webinar thank you dr sonal uh dear colleagues and esteemed guests and my dear students it is with my pleasure and enthusiasm that i head of the department would like to welcome you all to our webinar on aesthetic in pediatric dentistry firstly i would like to express my sincere gratitude to our, to our beloved chairman sir professor dr balvin s toma and esteemed principal sir dr nk sunil for their unwavering support for organizing this event possible this <laughs> our educational initiative is truly commendable today we have a distinguished guest speaker professor dr kanika gupta who is an expert in the field of pediatric dentistry and a great friend of mine too is an expert in strength our understanding of interaction between aesthetics and pediatric dentistry so i invite all of you to actively participate engage in a fruitful discussion and this is a valuable opportunity to enhance our knowledge in provide help for our pediatric patient okay thank you thank you ma'am now i would like to take the pleasure in introducing you all to the speaker for today's webinar dr kanika gupta verma The topic today is quite alluring in itself. I would like to start the webinar by introduction of her, who has created a niche for herself. Dr. Kanika Gupta Verma received bachelor's in dentistry from Government Dental College and Hospital Amritsar, Punjab, in two thousand five, and master's in pediatric and preventive dentistry from Guru Nanak Dev Dental College, Sunam, Punjab, in two thousand nine. She is presently working as professor in department of pediatric dentistry, T. Thankar Mahavi Dental College, Muradabad. She is also a life member of Indian Society of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry and IDA. She has around sixty-eight national and international publications. She has been working as an active academician for thirteen years with a keen interest in aesthetic and surgical management of children and adolescents. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. Since while the webinar is going on, if you have any queries, please put up the queries in chat box, and they will be answered at the end of the webinar. Over to you, Dr. Tanika. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sonal, uh, for introducing me to this scientific platform. I extend my warm regards and thanks to Dr. M K Sunil sir for giving me this opportunity to share my views on this scientific platform, and my special thanks to my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Chaya, Professor and Head Department of Periodontics. for inviting me to this webinar being hosted by nims dental college and hospital jaipur i hope uh, the slides are visible to you all no i think uh, we are not able to see that yes we can see now yes yes okay I sir thank you sir it's a last slide i think you can see question answers 
sir uh, i am sharing my slides sir i think it's with uh, nims dental college picture sir that was the first yes, slide yes slide. yes yes we can see the first slide webinar okay, on the field dental yeah, yeah yes yes sir yes sir thank you sir yes so uh, let us begin this scientific session with a beautiful quote take a limitation and always turn it into an opportunity take an opportunity and always turn into an adventure by dreaming big good afternoon and everyone myself dr kanika gupta professor department of pediatric and preventive dentistry prithankar mahavir dental college and research center muradabad life is better when you are busy finding a reason to smile or to instill one and we being the periodontists are instilling these beautiful smiles in children as well as adolescents so today we are going to discuss about the concepts of aesthetics and the treatment modalities in pediatric and preventive dentistry the topic will be discussed with you all uh, by understanding of what is basically the aesthetics what is the concept of golden proportion what are the various treatment modalities of aesthetics in pediatric dentistry what is the role of periodontist in designing the smiles and what are all the precautions you need to uh, instruct the parents uh, so that they can maintain the child uh, smile so uh, let us go in the basics first so what is aesthetic basically aesthetics in uh, way back in 1735 uh, the term was coined by alexander gottlieb it was derived from a greek word known as aesthetic and uh, aesthetics basically means it is a kind of a sense of perception it is the perception of how the things are being perceived by our senses it is the study of beauty and taste then a german philosopher emmanuel kant recognized aesthetic as an independent field he saw that aesthetic is a unitary and a self sufficient type of human experience so he felt that all those aesthetically appealing objects looks to be beautiful when they incorporate a particular proportion harmony and unity between their parts he meant that all uh, those objects they are symmetrical in their dimensions and he defined these basic concepts that quantify the beauty as divine proportion the basic principle of aesthetics defined by him was based by uh, based on the greek and roman mathematics so let us have uh, some discussion about what kind of mathematics was incorporated uh in defining the aesthetics so in short what is the concept of beauty beauty is all about identifying the divine proportion or golden proportion so this is one of the beautiful concept that you always take into consideration while you are accepting any kind of aesthetic treatment in the patient so let us just begin with what is the golden proportion or golden ratio as the term implies it is basically basically the ratio of one segment over the other so if we can uh, see this is a rectangle and this rectangular image is being divided into two segments this denote this larger segment as e and the smaller one as b and together they are uh, the complete uh, length of the rectangle is denoted by a plus b so they define that the golden proportion is the ratio of a is to b that is equivalent to a plus b over a and this golden proportion comes out to be as a number that uh, that is 1.618 and they term this golden proportion as the golden number now what is the role of this golden number or this golden rectangle into the various portions or the various objects or the faces so it has been said that whenever you recognize any face of a human being you recognize a flower a building or you can say any animal if it falls under the golden proportion it always looks to be aesthetically more pleasing to you for example uh, just we can consider a rose flower first so you can see a dotted line uh, i have created a rectangle over the rose flower so this dotted line is representing a rectangle and this rectangle is being divided into a larger segment and this one is the smaller segment so when uh, the larger segment is uh getting a uh, divided with the smaller segment we get a proportion and if this proportion comes out to be near to 1.618 or mm -hmm. near to the golden number this rose flower will looks to be beautiful so similarly this concept is being applied to almost every object every human being and animals and everywhere even in the buildings too so a phenomena that is related to the beauty 
is a kind of a magical thread that is connecting and it is known since ages and it is none other than the golden proportion way back in uh, 530 bc pythagoras discovered a mathematical solution for what was perceived as beautiful or ugly he discovered a golden number that was represented by a greek symbol phi and he take the reciprocal of this number that is a reciprocal of phi and uh, got a number that is 0.618 so in other terminology the phi was equivalent to 1.618 and we, when you take the reciprocal of it that is 1 is to 1.618 it comes out to be the reciprocal of phi that is 0.618 later this golden proportion application was done into dental aesthetic in 1978 initially it was only applied to the certain fields surgical prosthodontics and the orthodontic field but nowadays the golden proportion concept is being applied to the various fields of dentistry so let us now take this golden proportion and golden rectangle to our dental aesthetics now how we can understand this golden uh, rectangle or golden proportion in relation to our dental segments so whenever you have to analyze or whenever you have to assess the golden proportion you always have to draw a straight line or you always have to consider any object in a form of a straight line that could be divided into two segments one is the larger one and one is the smaller one and these segments are measured with the help of a this gauge. meeting is being recorded that gorge is known as the golden proportion gorge now this uh, here you can see the tongs of that gorge and uh, the segment is being divided into the larger and a smaller segment so whenever the ratio of this segment is taken that is the larger over the smaller one you get the golden proportion ratio so uh, now uh, moving on this golden rectangle towards our dental segment so let us consider the maxillary central incisors together so if we can consider the two maxillary central incisors together the width of the two maxillary central incisors when in proportion to the height of the maxillary central incisor it is observed that it comes out to be 1.618 now how you can apply this concept when you are managing the aesthetics so basic portion is that so whenever you are just handling the aesthetics you have to go for the smile designing either you have to go for the composite build ups in the interior region so what you have to consider is you have to keep in mind the basic golden proportion so uh, you have to just uh, have in mind that i have i want the ratio of the width of the central incisor over the height it should come near to 1.618 so if you keep on managing the ratio or you keep on managing uh, your segment behavior within the golden proportion it will definitely looks to be more aesthetically pleasing now uh, your dental segments are also associated with the other facial perspectives gingival perspectives too like it has been observed that the interior segment uh, is like uh, from canine to canine it is in the golden proportion with the areas of neutralities what are the areas of neutrality or what are the neutral spaces basically when your patient smile there are the areas of uh, neutrality or the neutral spaces created in the posterior portion now these neutral spaces are said to be in the golden proportion with your interior dental segment similar uh, is the golden proportion phenomena applied to your lip line when you uh, say the patient to just uh, relax in a uh, relaxed phase the lip line is dividing the lower portion of the face the lower third of the face so lower third of the face is divided again into a larger and a smaller segment the larger segment extend from the lip line to the bottom of the chin or the to the chin tip and it is the smaller segment is extending from the lip line to the bottom of the nose and when you take the ratio of the larger over the smaller segment it is again in the golden proportion that it come near to 1.618 now coming on to how you can uh, just design your smile on the basis of the eyes so uh, when you consider the facial perspective the eyes are highly important so here uh, you can uh, see this is a golden gorge this is clear in this uh, so golden gorge with the two segments like this is measuring the larger one and the smaller is a uh, smaller segment is measured by the smaller halves so uh, here we can just uh, denote the eyes or the white of the eyes with ab the distance between the eyes as bc and the together we can club the ab plus bc as ac segment similarly for our dental aspect 
we are taking the interior uh, dental aspect as fg that is ranging from canine to canine and our smile line as de now it is it has been said that while designing your smile you should take into consideration that your interior dental segment that is ranging from canine to canine whenever you are designing the smile it should be almost equivalent to the space between the two eyes that means fg segment should be near equivalent to the to bc similarly the width of the smile that is the de it should be equivalent to ace so uh, now adapting the uh, concept of golden proportion into the eyes and the dental segment now it has been said that the white of the eyes that, that is the ab it is in the golden proportion with the space between the eyes that is bc so ab is in the golden proportion with bc here i think it must be uh, clearly you can recognize like uh, here the golden uh, gorge is also open so you can see that this one is a smaller segment and this is the larger one so here the bc over the ab will comes out to be 1.618 similarly if you consider the dental segment that is the fg anterior aesthetic dental segment will be in the golden proportion to the white of eye so always take into consideration the width of the eyes while you are designing the smile line or while you are designing the interior aspect or the interior segment interior dental segment of a patient so whenever you apply the concept of golden proportion the forms and the lines everything can taken into consideration and they are optimized the dentistry will definitely looks to be more beautiful and more natural aesthetic so aesthetic is what into the dentistry it is just the fusion of art and science we are taking into consideration the dental gingival perspective along with the facial and dental facial perspective and finally linking them with the psychological perspective of your child this proposes the aesthetic link to the dentition for the dental aesthetics you need to have some principle in your mind that are important to be considered these are the three basic principles that you always keep in mind these principles are color form and the lines of your dentition so first of all just taking into consideration the color color is one of the prominent force that is always taken into consideration before you just uh, visualize the form and the lines of the teeth color is the one that is measured by a chlorimeter and uh, this is a color me uh, color measuring instrument and the chlorimetry is basically based on uh, three basic principle that is the light source the object and the human vision system we define the color and the aspects of the color into three basic dimensions and these dimensions are measured by using the color order system or the munsel system Munsel system is a kind of a systemic way by which you can arrange the colors in the three dimensions. So let us just explain it in a brief and in a crisp, clear uh, manner. So these three dimensions are the hue, value, and chroma. In which the hue, you can say, it is a basic color. Like I am recognizing a red color, a green color, or a blue color. So the basic color is known as the hue. Then comes the value. value means how much light or how much dark a particular color is for example if i am considering a color black now if i am going for a lighter shades of black it will it will turn to gray then the lighter gray and finally it will turn to white so this is how the lightness or the darkness of a particular color range and that is determined by the value or value dimension then comes the chroma chroma is basically a kind of a visual perception that is determining the intensity of a particular color for example if i am taking a gray color now the gray color i am increasing in the intensity of the gray color in the uh, values and this intensity increase will change the final chroma of the that particular color so this is how the color uh, is recognized for your particular patient and you have to apply this application while designing the smile or doing the composite build ups and even in the restorations too the next uh, principle that you have to consider while going for the dental aesthetic is the form of the teeth so very important basically whenever you observe a tooth so tooth is either uh, a kind of a circular uh, form or it has a squarish or a triangular form so if i uh, come across a female patient and uh, i have to give a feminine look i will give more of the curvatures to my build up or the smile design so whenever you are giving more of the curvatures more of the rounding off of the teeth it will go for more of the feminine appearance and if you are going for the more of uh, 
straight appearances or the squarish appearances that will give you a more of the masculine appearance so it depends upon how you are designing your smile depending upon the gender of the patient so more circular more the recording has appearance stopped give the more curvaceous appearance will give you the circular appearance and uh, more uh, squarish appearance will give you the masculine appearances then comes the next uh, dimension or the next principle that is the line nature has provided us with some horizontal and the vertical lines that are appearing to be as optical illusions and the teeth are being arranged in the curvaceous arrangements these curvaceous arrangements need to always be followed whenever you are arranging the teeth or whenever you are designing the smile for example it has all been always been uh, recognized that the central incisors and the canines are either near to of equal height or canines are little lower one and when you are designing designing the lateral incisors you always keep the lateral incisor little above the height of the central incisor and the lateral incisor and, and the uh, canines so this is how we attain the curvaceous arrangement of the teeth in a natural go so cosmetic dentistry or aesthetic dentistry is basically an art and science in which you just play with the materials for creating the beautiful spines Dental aesthetics is not only in the mind of adults now, but now our children and adolescents are really very aware for the aesthetic industry. They come to us to close the spaces, to get their uh, color improved, to get the change uh, in the shape and the size of their teeth. But whenever you are designing the smiles, whenever you are maintaining the aesthetics, always keep into consideration the dental and gingival aesthetics. How you have to keep the smile in harmony and balance so that is very important while you are going for the application of any cosmetic dentistry technique in the children and adolescents so there are numerous application of aesthetic dentistry in children and adolescents so it ranges from the simple aesthetic restorations that can be used to manage your uh, carious lesions then dental trauma then management of discolored teeth the treatment of hypoplastic spots then you can restore the diastema rather than going for the orthodontic management you can even restore the diastemas with your uh, composites then we have uh, the bonded bridges and splints the beautiful alternative beautiful innovation rather than going for the metallic bridges and splint we have the innovation of aesthetic bridges and aesthetic splints then you have the veneers you have uh, the aesthetic crowns rather than going for the metallic crowns we have the aesthetic space maintainers also this application is a beautiful alternative for the conventional metallic uh, space maintainers we have the aesthetic splinting too so let us discuss all these application in brief one by one so first of all uh, giving you a brief idea about the aesthetic restorations so you must all be aware that the aesthetic restorations are those that mimic the natural appearance of the tooth they uh, always establish the self confidence but we have some aesthetic restorations with little bit of variations uh, for our younger age groups so these are the attractive colorful filling materials that are available so they are highly uh, good for the patients who lack the cooperation and we have the decorated appliances that are available these kind of the colorful filling material and the appliances they give opportunity to your uh, younger patients to select the color of their choice and they will definitely uh, look into it and uh, you have the various aesthetic restorative materials available like the conventional glass enamel cements resin modified glass enamel cements then we have the composites then uh, compomers that is the enamel modified resins and we have the dental ceramics so uh, coming on to the conventional glass enamel cement it is basically the bread and butter of pediatric dentistry we are commonly using this glass enamel cement in day to day practice specially used to restore the teeth using the art approach for interior and posterior restoration both we have the added advantage of the fluoride release it inhibit the scandry caries with the beautiful aesthetic results then a little modification of the conventional uh, gic we have the resin based gic that is again uh, releasing the fluoride it is less moisture sensitive and giving the beautiful aesthetics and good wear strength now uh, since many years we are using uh, a beautiful material that is the composite composite is a kind of a material that is available in the various shades in the various forms composite depending upon the filler content we have the nano composite we have micro filled micro hybrid hybrid composite available then composite is available in the different shades too 
like here you can just uh, have a look like uh, darker shades that are available are the dentinal shades or you have the opaquers also then you have the body shades for the bulk fillings then we have the enamel shades and the translucent shade for the final translucent appearance of the tooth just mimicking the natural appearance of the tooth here you can see these all are the body shades above and the below here are the enamel shades with the difference in the translucency appearance so uh, you are not just going to uh, take a composite just select a shade like i am just going to go for a a1 or a2 shade and just uh, go for a build up this is not how it is going to be done for the aesthetic restoration so for maintaining the aesthetics you have to be very wise while using the composites you have to take the different shades you can use the opaquers over it you can use the dentinal shades body shades and finally the translucency of a tooth could be maintained by using the different enamel shades depending upon the basic uh, color of the patient so this is how you can just play with the composites and uh, do the beautiful aesthetics in your patients now the amalgamation of uh, two materials and taking out the advantages of the two materials that is a gic and the composites we have a material of choice that is a polyacid modified resin based composite it is the compomer compomer is a material that is a kind of a cross between the composite and gic and it is a kind of a aesthetic material white in color available in different shades we have the campules of this and uh, we can go for the restorations with compomers now a little twist in the compomer again we have the colored compomers available and uh, these are available in by the voco company by the name of twinky stars uh, they are especially used for uh, those patients who are uh, just love the different colors especially for the younger age groups they are uh, the glittered uh, colored materials you can see these are uh, having some glitter particles inside and the patient can choose the color of their choice and uh, they will be uh, showing the high cooperation level when uh, they are uh, having the color of their choice so you can uh, just use this these kind of a material whenever uh, you are assessing a young uh, younger group of children then comes the dental aesthetics dental ceramics dental ceramics are having the stable aesthetic qualities these are glassy and crystalline with the excellent biocompatibility dental ceramics are available for your crowns for your uh, ceramo metal restoration for your inlays and onlays everywhere nowadays the dental ceramics are being applied and they are available in the various shapes and sizes uh, you can even have the preformed dental ceramics available that can be easily applied to the patient now uh, we are discussing about all these dental restorations restorative materials now uh, we are well aware that these restorative materials are simply taken out either you mix it or apply it directly after uh, the etching and bonding of your uh, tooth and you just simply place this uh, restorative material direct but we have something different for you there is a little innovation for this uh, the innovation is uh, that rather applying uh, directly the restorative material over to the tooth we have a modification that is the indirect restorative technique in this indirect restorative technique you have to manage uh, almost uh, 70% of the management of your uh, filling in the lab so the lab work is comparatively increased but your chair side is specially decreased so this is highly useful when you are managing the extensive coronal destruction restorations when you want to re establish the proximal contour and you want to establish the cervical occlusal height it is highly uh, good for restoring the function of the teeth and this kind of the uh, indirect restorative technique is uh, how it is going to be done so uh, if a patient comes to you with a carious with a big carious lesion you just have to prepare the cavity after preparing the cavity take a impression and uh, go for the preparation of the cast on the diagnostic cast if you can see here i have pre prepared a cast and over the cast you have to apply a separating media that separating media could be the petroleum jelly or you can apply even the cold mold seal over that you can use your aesthetic material like you can use the composite you can use the uh, either you can use the zirconomers etc so for whatever the aesthetic material you want to apply so you just uh, use that aesthetic material and that material is finally finished and polished with the beautiful fissures and the pits you can manipulate in the lab only so you don't uh, have uh, the much time uh, during the chair side for managing all the stuff 
So you can do all these things in the lab easily. So once your restoration is completely done, you just uh, finish it off. After finishing it off, then you can take an explorer and thus uh, simply lift this restoration out of the cast. Then call the patient. On the chair side, you can just adapt this uh, complete restoration in the patient mouth. And uh, after the final finishing and polishing, you can simply uh, cement this or uh, you can bond this restoration. If it is composite, you can use a dual care composite for the placement of this indirect restoration in the patient mouth. So this will save you a lot of time during the chair side. And this is a beautiful innovation in which most of the contours are uh, recognized. We achieve the beautiful contours. Uh, uh, beautiful proximal contours are achieved and even uh, we can just uh, manage with the polymerization shrinkage too. As you all know the composite is always having the polymerization shrinkage. So uh, when you manage the composite in outside the oral cavity the polymerization shrinkage will always uh, will happen uh, outside only and then you can easily adapt it afterwards with the final restoration in the patient mouth. Coming on to the next application, that is a dental trauma. So dental trauma is most commonly seen in the anterior maxillary teeth that can range from a simple crack to the version of the tooth. And we have uh, the various management techniques for the dental trauma. A simple trauma can be simply dealt with uh, contouring or the composite buildup. Or if it is involving the pulp, you have to go for the endodontic interventions. After endodontic intervention, you can go for the post and core and the aesthetic crowds. So this is uh, how you manage the dental trauma. So I will show you one of the case that was beautifully managed with one of the innovation rather than just directly putting up uh, the composite material as the composite builder. We have managed this case with the indirect technique. Now this patient reported to us with the LS class 2 fracture with respect to 2-1. Now after getting a protective layer over uh, his exposed dentine, we took the impression of both the arches and finally the diagnostic cast were prepared. Over the diagnostic cast, we did the wax mock-up by allowing all the uh, curves and the contour of the tooth. So, uh, over this, uh, now polyvinyl sheet as you Polyvinyl sheet, as you must be aware of, it is a kind of a sheet that is uh, used uh, for the for a habit breaking appliance for bruxism. Now, this polyvinyl sheet is taken and adapted over the arch, and uh, this will act as a template for carrying your composite in the patient mouth over the fractured tooth. A small hole was created over this polyvinyl sheet. Here you can visualize a small hole was created, and this hole was uh, just created to remove the excess of the composite when we apply the composite in the patient mouth. And uh, chair side, what we do is the fracture tooth is finally etched and the bond. After doing the etching and the bonding, this template with the composite is adapted over the fracture tooth and the curing was done with the light cure uh, gun. After curing, this template was uh, removed and uh, we obtain uh, a kind of a result that is almost a finished product is achieved. So here you can see, a uh, well formed uh, contours are achieved for uh, your uh, 2 1. Like we have the perfect incisal contours, we have the perfect palatal uh, areas that are constructed. So, this is how the final finished product is achieved just using the template. But only uh, a little bit of uh, glitches that uh, the little bit of compos composite just flown over uh, your 1 1. So, that was later removed with the polishing. So this indirect technique will uh, give you a beautiful result. This is a pre-operative and this is a post-operative uh, image. Just showing the beautiful result and uh, with the minimum of uh, chair side time and the basic manipulation during the lab work. Coming on to management of discolored teeth. Discolored teeth are commonly managed either by the bleaching, that is the common treatment modality, using 10% carbamide peroxide gel or 10% hydrogen peroxide gel. But bleaching is uh, rather contraindicated if we consider the younger children, especially below 10 years of age. Special, uh, it is because of the cervical erosions. But uh, for uh, a non-vital tooth, you can just apply the bleaching agent and uh, can have a good results. 
Beside bleaching, we can also go for uh, another technique that is a micro abrasion. Micro abrasion, as the name suggests, it is just abrading the layer of the enamel, the top surface of your tooth, um, microscopically. So we are just abrading it and abrading it a bit and finally restoring it with a layer of composites. And we have the different kits that are available with the various company for the micro abrasion treatment to be done. So how it is going to happen? Uh, micro abrasion kits are having some acidic uh, solutions inside. These are either 6 to 7 percent of hydrochloric acids or they are 18 percent of uh, phosphoric acids that are available. So first of all, whatever the uh, stains are there, they are removed by the action of uh, your acid along with the abrasive. And the abrasive in that is uh, normally the pumice that is added. And with this, uh, we can just remove the 7 to 22 micron of the enamel segment. After doing this abrasive action and the action of acid will act and uh, it remove the interprismatic substances too. And this will increase your uh, light refraction characteristics. Along with it, the pigmentations that are, the, for example, you have the intrinsic pigments, they are also oxidized. After doing all these treatments, then finally we achieve a kind of a translucent appearance that could be restored or the pits could be restored by the layer of composites. Then coming on to when a patient reports to you with the diastema, the patient says to you that I'm not uh, going to stay for a long for the orthodontic treatment. So what modality you have? So we have the modality for the aesthetic management of diastema and this aesthetic management involves the placement of composites. So how it is going to happen? Now, whenever you apply the composite, always keep in mind to just reduce a tooth segment a bit. You can just remove 0.5 to 1 mm of the labial sur surface or the palatal surface of the tooth. Why you are going to remove or why you are going to reduce this? Because if you don't uh, reduce this, the composite will be applied over to the enamel and it will increase the bulk of the tooth. So you just have to reduce a bit of the tooth material. So just 0.5 to 1 mm. And after the reduction, you have to give the bevel over that surface that is reduced. What is a bevel? Bevel is basically the kind of irregularities that needs to be created over the reduced surfaces. Now, these bevels or these irregularities, they help in increasing the surface area of that particular tooth segment. Increasing the surface area will definitely increase your bonding of the material. So for a diastema, we have to reduce a little bit of the mesial and the labial surface of both the teeth, both the adjacent teeth. So mesial and the labial surface of this tooth and similarly the mesial and the uh, labial surface of the adjacent tooth. And placing a mylar strip after rubber dam application, you can simply play with your composite and restore it to a beautiful smile. Here you just have to take into consideration that whenever you are increasing the tooth width, it should be increased for uh, both the adjacent teeth equally. Now coming on to a beautiful innovation that is uh, rather than going for the metallic bridges and splints, we have the aesthetic innovation that is the bonded bridges and splint. These bonded bridges and splints are the very uh, good alternative if you don't want to apply the metal in the patient mouth. Here you can see a uh, material that is the rib bond it is basically the polyethylene plasma treated fiber system these are the fibers that are available in this it is of uh, varying dimensions we have the two millimeter three or four millimeter diameter uh, dimensions that are available for fibers these fibers are reinforced using the bonding agent and uh, your composite and finally they are fixed with the adjacent teeth act as a bridge and your pontic could be fixed with this bridge so this is a kind of the aesthetic alternative rather than putting out uh, removable partial dentures or the other fixed partial dentures or any kind of metallic bridge. You can use this alternative, especially for the younger children and the adolescents. Splinting, normally uh, we go for the splinting by using the ligature wire and the ligature wire can be overshadowed by use of the composite over the teeth. Or another alternative, if your uh, pocket permit, you can even go for the ribbon. So similar ribbon fiber is being applied over uh, the teeth for uh, splinting purpose. And this splinting is uh, finally fixed with the composite. So these are the aesthetic alternative for the splinting. Another uh, modification of a uh, bridge that is specially used in case of the mixed or the primary dentition 
is the Hollywood bridge or the Gropper appliance. This Gropper appliance is basically used when we have to maintain the space in the interior region, especially because we have the early loss of uh, the tooth or the teeth in the interior region. And we have to keep uh, the development of the speech in a younger child. Uh, we don't want to create uh, the deleterious tongue habits. We have to restore his masticatory function. This uh, Hollywood bridge or the Gropper appliance is a beautiful alternative. You must all be aware of the Nens palatal arch. So this Nens palatal arch is uh, kind of a modification of Nens palatal arch is this Gropper appliance. In this, again, uh, the bands are adapted over your molars. You can use the first molar or if you have the primary dentition, you can use the second primary molar. And you can just... Uh, uh, go for uh, the adaptation of the wire and finally over the wire where, uh, where we have to adapt the palatal button. Over it, you just flow the acrylic. You can uh, use the pontex as a raisin uh, teeth or you can use the pontex if you have the original primary teeth available. You can just fix it with the acrylic. And finally, you just uh, fix or you can just cement these bands in the patient mouth and adapt it in the anterior region. So this is one of the aesthetic alternative for the bridges in the Younger children. Coming on to the veneers, porcelain veneers, as you all know, they are the thin wafers and they are just uh, of the size of your fingernails. They are the beautiful uh, color changing property materials. These uh, veneers are available for uh, managing the color of the teeth, for uh, closing the spaces, for better alignment, for uh, maintaining the length of the teeth, for changing the shape of the teeth. They mimic the natural uh, teeth in color, translucency, and even in the surface texture. They are of the high strength, so they are resistant to wear, and even they are long-lasting. Veneers are nowadays, we have the kits of the veneer. We can even uh, go for the direct veneer placement by choosing them from the kits that are available. Or even you can just customize them. You jo just go for the cutting of your uh, uh, teeth that are involved. Take the impression, send the cast, and you can get the veneers prepared. Customized veneer prepared for your patient. Rather than using the metallic crowns, we have the aesthetic alternatives. The aesthetic crowns could be the luted crowns that are available with the facings, or they could be the bonded crowns that are being bonded using the composites like the dual care composites. Luted crowns uh, with the facings are generally luted with the GIC luting cement, that is a type 2 cement. And the bonded crowns are usually fixed with the, du uh, with the dual cure composite. In case of this, we have the strip crowns. They are directly, uh, we are placing the composite over the tooth. So uh, these are uh, one of the luted crowns. You must have seen the stainless steel crowns. Now these stainless steel crowns, they are an unesthetic or they are aesthetically not pleasing. So what could be uh, the management of such anesthetic crowns? Patient can't afford much. So you have to apply the stainless steel crown only. So what alternative we have? We can just cut the labial window of the stainless steel crown. You just remove the labial surface of the stainless steel crown. After removing the labial surface, take the composite over the remaining uh, tooth material that is available. We go for the composite placement. And composite is also a little bit bonded over the stainless steel crown. So this is how we achieve the open face stainless steel crown with the composite facing that is applied directly over the fixed stainless steel crown in the mouth. If you uh, don't want to go for the uh, open face stainless steel crown, we are even having the pre-veneered stainless steel crown by the various companies. They are by the name of the Kinder Crowns, Dura Crowns, New Smile Crowns and Cheng Crowns. And these crowns are basically having the aesthetic material that are placed over one or more surfaces. And they are available in one or two shades. In this, the stainless steel crown is being covered mainly over the buccal surface using a tooth colored coating of polyester or epoxy hybrid compositions. And these are the very beautiful alternatives of the metallic stainless steel crowns. Coming on to the bonded crowns, as the name suggests, now we are not luting them. We are not cementing them with any cementing uh, cement. We are now bonding these crowns using the bonding agent, using your composites, using your dual curl composites. Now, these bonded crowns, the most commonly used one is the strip crown. Strip crown is also known as a shell crown in which the crowns are available in the form of the shells or the celluloids. These are the celluloid crowns that are available for the various teeth. We have for the laterals, for the central incisors, and they are available in the various sizes too. What you have to do is, you have to select the crown of the choice according to the patient. 
you have to prepare the tooth in the patient mouth remove the carious lesion you can apply the agent the bonding agent and finally in these shells you have to fill the composite and carry these comp carry the composite over the remaining tooth structure and then cure it after curing happen the composite got uh, stuck with the your uh, teeth and then these shells will be removed will be cut down by the blades and these shells will be removed and your composite will be placed over the remaining tooth structure giving the beautiful crown appearance here is one of the patient that was uh, managed uh, for 51 and 61 we have done with the endodontic treatment after doing the endodontic treatment post and core was done and after doing post and core uh, the teeth were managed using the strip crown giving the beautiful aesthetic appearance the iron crowns the tooth colored uh, polycarbonate crowns these are also available in the various sizes and shapes and these are the preformed uh, shells that could be easily applied according to the sizes you require the art glass crown they are the preformed crowns that give you the natural feel they are bonded uh, using composite and they have the good uh, longevity and the aesthetic uh, for the primary teeth the pedo jacket crowns uh, pedo jacket crowns are uh, normally used when we are going for applying the crowns for the temporary purpose these are uh, the tooth colored uh, crowns that normally doesn't get split doesn't get stain or crack they are usually trimmed using the scissors and uh, the only disadvantage is only one size is available and you can't trim it with a burr if you use a burr they will just got split it out then uh, one of the innovation in the crown portions now sometime what happen when you are dealing with the primary dentition you are uh, not getting the proper size for your crowns sometime the patient is having bruxism sometime you have the grossly decayed teeth even they are not managed with the post and core and sometime your crowns are not getting fit uh, fit into the uh, rest of the portion of the teeth that is available so in those particular situation what to do so the alternative is just preparing the crown for uh, for the patient by yourself these are the custom made crowns that you prepare by your own and these are known as the indirect shell crowns these indirect shell crowns are prepared in the lab and uh, let us see how they are uh, going to be prepared so here you can see a patient with the interior segment that is decayed so we have 53525161626263 and that is decayed after uh, removing the carious lesions we took the impression poured the cast over the diagnostic cast we applied a separating media after applying the separating media we uh, just modified our uh, composite and uh, we played with the composite rather and using the composite we attained the crowns so these are the custom made crowns according to the height what we required depending upon the mandibular uh, cast that was available so these uh, crowns were prepared after the crowns were prepared we just removed the crowns using a explorer from the cervical margin after removing the crowns you can just finish it you can polish it and then then again you have to seat all these crown in the over the cast after seating the crown now we require a template that could be used to carry all these crowns together in the patient mouth so what we have done is we use the silicon impression material as the template we took the impression up uh, of the maxillary arch after taking the impression of the maxillary cast an interior window was cut down to expose the shell crowns that were prepared now these composite crowns were exposed so that we have the easy visibility whenever we are carrying it to the patient mouth now along with the template they are uh, adapted over the patient uh, remaining tooth structure that are the teeth structure that were available after uh, checking the fit and finding final finishing and polishing was done after finishing and polishing they were finally uh, bonded using the dual cure composite and this is how we attain the final results the beautiful result with respect to all these teeth zirconia is the newer material that is uh, being used with the higher advancement zirconia has the life like appearances for the teeth it is a beautiful material that is available uh, for as a crowns for almost all the teeth we have for the canines we have lateral centrals even for, for the posteriors zirconia crowns are available and they are just uh, giving the beautiful properties of uh, stainless steel they are extremely biocompatible they can resist the cyclic stresses of the mouth but the only disadvantage is zirconia crowns are highly costly 
and secondly the zirconia crowns need uh, the reduction of the teeth approximately 1.5 to 2 mm and rather than sometimes more also so that is the only disadvantage with the zirconia crowns whenever we go for a composite build up uh, in case uh, where you have applied a post sometime what happen or you are going for some shell crowns even uh, what happen is your metallic post always show be uh, below the composite uh, that you have placed because you are dealing with the primary teeth and now you have the few uh, type of crowns that are available like you are placing the shell crowns for example and you are just placing a thinner material of the composite over that post now the metallic uh, post always uh, be shown uh, below this composite so what could be the alternative so that the post is not visible below the composite uh, so the alternative is rather than going for the metallic post we have the aesthetic alternative we can use the aesthetic post and coat one of uh, the preformed posts that are available are the carbon fiber posts these carbon fiber posts have the modulus of elasticity quite similar to the dentine you can easily use these posts you can cut the carbon fiber post according to the dimension of your primary tooth and according to dimension you can simply uh, use this post and place it and over it you can go for either the strip crowns or can you can uh, go for uh, the simple composite build ups Here is the case in which we have five uh, one. We have the five two five one six two. Uh, This meeting is being recorded. We have five two five one six one and six two that were grossly decayed. After doing the endodontic intervention, after doing the endodontic therapy for all these uh, four teeth, we just uh, take the uh, these carbon fiber post, adjusted the size of the carbon fiber post according uh, to the length that. we uh, want for the post we adapted uh, these carbon fiber post uh, into the patient uh, teeth after the adaptation the core build up was done after doing the core build up then uh, we finally uh, restore all these four, four teeth using the strip crowns so this is how we maintain the aesthetic this was the pre operative image and this one is the post operative with the beautiful aesthetics in the patient mouth so uh, if a case arrived uh, when you are just uh, short of uh, the finances or the patient is short of finances can't approach for the carbon fiber post so what could be the alternative the another innovative alternative for the composite uh, uh, for the carbon fiber post is the composite post you can fabricate your post by your own way so you can use the composite for the fabrication of the post but here you have to use the composite with the good filler content because we need the strength in the post so you can either use the hybrid composite or the micro hybrid composite for the post materials you can manipulate uh, the composite prepare them in the shape of the post and you can simply use them in the patient teeth here is the case you can see here uh, the patient has grossly decayed 52 and the 62 endodontic treatment was done with respect to both the teeth after doing the endodontic treatment the composite post was uh, first of all check then manage and finally it is being bonded using the dual cure composite after bonding the composite post so uh, this is uh, how uh, we uh, get the appearance radiographically for the composite post so we have uh, a good opaque uh, appearance of the composite post that is almost visible so whenever you are applying the post the basic tip for the application of the post is you have to go for the post length only 2 mm below the cervical margin you are not going to uh, go for the removal of your obturating material beyond that 2 mm below the cervical margin so after removing the obturating material between your uh, post any kind of post whatever you are using between your post and between your obturating material always give a thin seal of gic type uh, gic type 2 so you have to go for a restorative uh, type of a gist a thin layer of gic between your post and your obturating material for a better seal of uh, your obturating material now this is uh, how the strip crowns were finally done over uh, these composite post this was the pre operative image and this one is the post operative one with the strip crowns uh, with respect to all the four t only we have uh, applied the composite post with respect to 52 and 62 next come the another innovation uh, you can go for uh, the use of another kind of a post you can uh, fabricate uh, by your own 
by using the rib bond fibers. So again, the rib bond fiber or the polyethylene fiber can be used in the form of the post. Ne these fibers looks to be a simple kind of a ribbon, but they are highly uh, strong in nature. When we reinforce these fiber by dipping them in the bonding agent and finally cure them, they become very stiff. And after getting stiff, when you just adapt it in the form of the post, and uh, you just uh, get your flowable composite flown over it and cure it, they become as stiff as stainless steel. So these are the beautiful alternative whenever you are going for the bonded bridges, whenever you are managing the wall steep, whenever you are managing the stainless steel, uh, uh, your space maintainers, and even the post. So here comes one of the case. Uh, we have a grossly decayed uh, tooth, that is the 5-1. Although the prognosis was poor, but the guardians were uh, quite adamant to preserve this teeth. So we have done with the endodontic treatment with respect to 5-1. After doing the endodontic treatment, the required length of the fiber was cut down. It was reinforced using dipping in bonding agent curing and then finally covering it with the flowable composite and curing it. Then the post was uh, adapted after removing the required length of the obturating material. Only disadvantage of this rib bond is it is radiolucent. It is not radiopaque. So the radiopaque uh, lining you can observe is that of the flowable composite in the post area. After adapting, uh, we have done with the core buildup. After doing the core buildup, the final uh, strip crowns are used for the final restoration of this tooth. So this is how the pre-operative picture changed to the post-operative one. Restoring the beautiful aesthetic in the interior segment. Coming on to uh, rather using the conventional metallic space maintainer, what could be the alternatives? Again, uh, the same polyethylene fibers or the glass fibers or the rib bond could be used as a space maintainer. You again have to take the desired length of the rib bond. You have to adapt it in the space. You can do this thing either in the patient mouth directly or even you can do it in the lab. After taking the impression, taking out the cast, after preparing the cast, you can manage this rib bond in the patient, uh, in the lab only. And in the lab, after your unit is totally complete, after reinforcement with bonding agent and the composite, you can take the whole of the space maintainer, carry it into the patient mouth. And finally, you can just bond it with using the composite. So uh, this could be done directly or indirectly. Both the techniques are applicable for using this uh, glass fiber reinforced composite uh, resin space maintainer. Uh, so let us have uh, one of the most simplest, I can say, the space maintainer. So this space maintainer is a great alternative to all the bulky space maintainer. This is a simple wire space maintainer. It is also known as a bonded simple wire space maintainer because it is being bonded using the composite resin. Now here, uh, what we do is uh, we take just a simple wire, a stainless steel wire, either you can use a 21 gauge or a 22 gauge wire and 21 or 22 number wire is used. You just have to give a horizontal adaptation uh, to the adjacent teeth. After the adaptation, horizontal adaptation, give a vertical band adapted near to gingiva giving a space of 0.5 millimeter from the gingiva give a vertical band and again adapt to the adjacent teeth after adapting this a simple wire component you have to bond it with the teeth now here what, what is the main uh, uh, concept or the main tip behind this whenever you are just applying the composite over any surface as we have already discussed for your composite buildups i told you to uh, just give a little reduction and give the bevels so similar thing is applied here so whenever you are just fixing out the space maintainer over the adjacent teeth just give the bevel over the label surfaces or the buckle surfaces of your teeth wherever you have to maintain the space so that your composite get entangled in the irregularities that you have created and it will give a good strength and this alternative is uh, highly aesthetic first of all because it is not showing in the mouth it is just placed in the vestibule and uh, secondly it is not very bulky it is a very simple wire space maintainer a small component is there and uh, third it is uh, not uh, coming out to be in the occlusion the lab work is almost totally nil if you are simply doing it on the chair side procedure uh, you can just complete whole procedure in 15 to 20 minutes coming on to the management of avulsion Avulsion, as you all know, it is just uh, coming out of the whole tooth. So sometimes patient take the avulsed tooth along with or sometimes he has uh, lost the tooth 
uh, in all the situation for the worst tooth management we commonly go for either the removal partial dentures we can go for fpds or even we can go for the implants nowadays but we have one other alternative that is again an innovation so that a worst tooth could be managed by using the glass fiber reinforced composite so here we can understand by uh, depicting in, in the case report here you can see we have a, a worst uh, two two here so the space is vacant but the patient was having their worst tooth along so we uh, used that worst tooth as the pontic so what we have did we removed the coronal segment of that tooth from the radicular portion that coronal segment was retrocreately uh, used and uh, the pulp, pulp was removed from the pulp chamber after removing the pulp the complete pulp chamber was filled with uh, your composite so that the that particular pontic that natural pontic could be having a better strength because we have removed whole of the pulp chamber so it was filled with the composite you can uh, you just cure it after uh, completing the pontic uh, process it is known as a avoid pontic because it is basically being used from a natural to structure so uh, now what we have uh, to do we took uh, the adjacent teeth near to the space near to the worst tooth space and uh, these adjacent teeth uh, that we have taken is the 21 and uh, 23 and, and the rib bond was finally adapted over the palatal surface it was reinforced with the bonding agent curing was done then flowable template to finally the portion so coming on to what kind of kind of preventive we did to avoid the medical just avoid the intrinsic training you should guide the parents and the guardians uh, the importance of systemic uh, fluoridation and the topical fluoride application so that the caries incidence could be reduced they should be uh, instructed not to go for the high caloric and the junk foods any kind of a detrimental habit whenever you notice such kind of a habit like bruxism or the thumb sucking they should be dealt at the earliest any kind of malocclusion you should always go for the orthodontic treatment at the earliest decayed teeth should be restored and if you encounter even a simple chip fracture it should be immediately contoured or it should be restored with the composite bonding so that we can just maintain the aesthetic in the patient mouth the basic aim is to maintain the preserve the tooth to maintain the space for the permanent tooth so this is our basic aim so the goal of the aesthetic treatment is not only giving a natural appearance but obtaining the result that is bright beautiful but also believable with the advent of such wonderful techniques different devices materials we have fun in achieving professional satisfaction by creating the beautiful smiles in our children and adolescent so that they can regain their self confidence these are a few of the references that are used for this presentation these are my publications that are totally in the aesthetic uh, field concerning with the aesthetic so whenever you just uh, have to go for any kind of a uh, reference you can just simply put a call or simply uh, give me a mail i will definitely share all the publications with you these are again the publications so coming on to just a brief uh, the tips and the topics that can uh, that can be used for your research projects that are the innovative ones uh, coming uh, in the coming fields or uh, you can use such topics like you can assess the golden proportion in the primary dentition or the mixed dentition you can even assess the golden proportion before and after the orthodontic treatments you can uh, compare uh, the different type of aesthetic crowns with the conventional ones you can compare the various restorative materials various aesthetic restorative materials together and all these things uh, with the components of you can incorporate you can compare the micro leakage you can compare the bond strength then you can even compare the plaque indices so such kind of thing, things you can uh, easily go for you can even uh, cover up the color changes also in the restorative materials 
so these kind of research project you can take in vitro or in vivo studies then uh, you can even assess the success of biological restorations in pediatric dentistry you can uh, take out the biological post and uh, you can compare it with the various aesthetic post available one of the recent thesis topic that we have done in our department is uh, the comparison of temporary crown materials so nowadays the temporary crown materials the aesthetic temporary crown materials are even available by the name of luxa crowns or ora tem these could be used for the comparison with the direct composite or with the shell crowns you, you can even uh, compare the aesthetic space maintainers the newer innovations with the conventional space maintainer a recent material that is uh, coming into the advent and it is being uh, recognized by the various company also like zanet or manni it is a bio nano ceramic composite so you can also go for some study over this uh, material so any kind of uh, parameter you can take it is a kind of a material that is being used as a enamel substitute so these were a uh, few of the topics that i found uh, to share with you for the research purpose thank you so much uh, for patient listening you can uh, if you have any question or any doubt uh, further you can always ping me up or you can just contact me on my mail id thank you so much and uh, session is open for discussion if you have any query you can just ask me thank you uh, kanika thank that you that was a very wonderful presentation uh, now the question and answer session will be uh, taken up so Dr. Sonal will be taking up the question and answer session. Dr. Sonal, thank you, ma'am. It was a wonderful session. Uh, thanks for sharing your expertise with us. Due to scarcity of time, ma'am, I'll be taking only a few questions. Yeah, sure, dear. Ma'am, can you share any memorable success story or case related to aesthetics and pediatric dentistry? Sonal aesthetic is always uh, i think it is a beautiful memory always uh, from uh, ranging from my first case during my post graduation till now so whatever the build ups whatever uh, the newer innovations or whatever the indirect techniques i am uh, going out in my uh, practice they are always a beautiful memory for me so few of the case reports were already shared with you people so uh, aesthetic is always memorable okay ma'am wonderful Uh, next question is, ma'am, how do you tailor treatment plan to balance aesthetic concerns with unique needs of each child? Actually, uh, Doctor Sonal, what happened is, uh, whenever you deal with any pediatric patient, you have to manage with the anxiety and the fear level of that patient also. So, depending upon the cooperation, depending upon anxiety fear level, we have to manage our treatment accordingly. like if you have the fearful and anxious patient you can better go for some indirect management techniques that are most uh, successful one if you are dealing with the young pediatric patient or with the anxious patient but if you have some cooperative patient in your dental uh, uh, clinic or dental setup you can always go for the direct techniques even uh, they could be easily managed and they could give you the wonderful results yeah thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you. now the last question for the session Uh, have you observed any specific preferences or trends in pediatric dental aesthetics among parents and children recently yeah definitely uh, there are a lot of variations nowadays uh, coming up in the dental setups also that the patients uh, parents are more aware rather we are uh, encountering the patients they are more aware of uh, the aesthetics nowadays so they are coming up with some new ideas and uh, they just want the changes in their smile lines and the smile designing also so i could say that the pediatric dentistry is uh, rather going up uh, quite in a heights uh, uh, for achieving much more aesthetics we have the newer innovations that could be applied in the pediatric dentistry rather okay ma'am thank you so much for the wonderful explanations thank you and for sharing your expertise we have received an overwhelming response uh, regarding the thank you so much ma'am it was a pleasure thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Uh, thank you, Sonal, uh, Doctor Sonal, for uh, wonderful, wonderfully moderating this session. 
and uh, to, uh, Kanika, uh, ma'am, uh, it was a really a wonderful session. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, I think so. A lot of people took a, a good uh, carry away message from your presentation. How to deal with the pediatric patient in the clinical setup? Definitely, yeah. all were a good uh, clinical point uh, views regarding the aesthetics in pediatric dentistry, ma'am. So, in that note, I just want to give you a certificate of appreciation from NIMS Dental College and Hospital. From thank you so much. Uh, association with the department of pediatric and preventive dentistry ma'am this thank just accept this certificate definitely we we'll mail you so much this. and uh, for uh, today's session uh, i'll kindly fill the feedback form so that uh, everybody can receive the e certificate to their mail id with the proper name as well as the correct credential so that we can Mail, mail them the e certificates. Dr. Sonal, can you uh, go for the thanks? Out of thanks, please. Yeah, I would like to pass on my regards and thanks to the speaker, Dr. Kanika, ma'am. Thanks for sharing your expertise, ma'am, once again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sonal. Yeah, uh, our chairman and chancellor, Dr. Balveer S. Thomasar, for the platform he's provided us, our dynamic principal, Dr. M.K. Sunil, sir, all heads and faculty members, media, IT, and technical staff for their support, and all the students and viewers who have sat for this webinar with an overwhelming response, and to Dr. Nancy for managing the Jehin. Yeah.